Hi, this is Jordan Weissman of Harebrain Schemes. And this is Mitch Gittleman, also of Harebrain Schemes. And we're really excited today to show you the first alpha game footage from Shadowrun Returns. Holy moly. This is a game we funded uh, through the generous backing of Kickstarter about 10 months ago that we've been heads down building. And well, what can I say, but welcome to Seattle 2054. All right, now this is Jordan's character, Lady Z, that he is allowing me to drive for you today. And please be careful with her. We'll see. Now, Lady Z is a street samurai, but of course you can create any character you want in Shadowrun. We have uh, six character archetypes, and you can start with any of them, but then grow your character in any direction you want. It's a classless system. Shadowrun is a mashup of science fiction and fantasy. It's a dystopian cyberpunk future into which magic has reawakened and brought with it the races and creatures of fantasy. Yeah, the world has gone to hell, basically. Yeah, and it's dominated by giant mega corporations, which don't give a crap about anybody but themselves. Not like today, of course. Now, speaking of corporations, uh, Lady Z has actually been hired by one of them as technology to investigate a hidden uh, corporate lab somewhere in this area. So she's trying to find out where it is. And then when she finds it, make sure that nothing inside survives. Uh, as Mitch is navigating on the street here, one of the things I want to mention is that this entire environment and all the environments you're going to see today are all built inside our editor. That editor comes with the PC and Mac versions of the game so that you guys can become game masters of your own, of your own games, creating your own stories, uh, building all of the environments, uh, the characters. Trigger logic, cats and dogs living together, total anarchy. It's all in your hands. So uh, Mitch is going up uh, to the homeless guy here to check out what's going on. It looks like he's talking to a ganger here, which is good news for us. Oh, now a point about the conversation system here in the game. A lot of the conversations will be based on the uh, attributes of your character that you add during character development, right? So you see strength there. That one uh, can uh, use, be used to intimidate or the the charisma of uh, Lady Z had a charisma of six or higher, she'd get that option, but unfortunately she doesn't. So we're going to choose, what, the top one, I think. Let's be smart asses. That's really, and, that's really yeah. unusual for you, Mitch, yeah. to be a smart Whoops, ass. Yeah. And, uh, so now if Mitch, Mitch had gone a different route in this conversation, he might have been able to avoid the fight, not his style. No, it's more like my real life. So uh, here comes a little support. Yo, Mikey. And what, you'll see we dropped out of uh, the free move mode and into turn-based mode for combat. Yeah, and it can, the game can flow freely back and forth between those. Oh! <laughs> now, you saw that smart. on the bottom, of the, uh, you know, Lady Z's weapon choices come up. He's choosing uh, uh, a weapons, and then inside weapons, we'll get into a deeper uh, later, is all the options for abilities uh, as well. Uh, the AI uh, is something we're really proud of. We worked a lot on this, and it, uh, it uses cover wait, 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 to its watch advantage. This, watch this. Yeah, I, I, I like using an automatic weapon in the middle of the streets. It's cool. It's Shadowrun. Yeah, I mean, like, if, it, it's, you know, if you were beating a dog, someone would care. <laughs> yeah, get closer to me. I have an idea. Yeah, he's got the shotgun. Yeah, he's got a shotgun, and I have an automatic weapon. Uh, okay, and so now, because Lady Z is pretty pretty advanced in ranged weaponry, she's able to get up to uh, and use all the abilities like, full, like this whole auto. Which... <laughs> He's awfully effective. <laughs> Dusted him. All right, now it's time for a conversation after a firefight. Well, it's because you can't go to Disneyland. <laughs> All right, so uh, coming back to the homeless men, uh, we can, you know, Mitch is going to dig through here. I and think try should to... we treat him nice or no, smartass? Oh, that was <laughs> no, that, <laughs> that's my default. But uh, and so he's going to tell us where where that gang was was living, which is of course what we hope to be where the location of the secret lab. Yeah, lives. what happened was uh, Lone Star, which is private security, uh, kicked the gangers out of their squat, and apparently there was a, a lab there before that the gangers were using, and now they're kicking them back out so they can sort of reconstitute that right. lab. And this this uh, this adventure that La Lady Z is on the shadow run that she's on is not the mainland main line plot of our game. Right, right, right. This, right. this is a side mission that you'll be able to run. In yeah, the no game. spoilers, no spoilers. Now, what we're not showing you is the hiring screen where we hired some runners to come with us. Uh, which is what you'd be able to do because you, you you know Shadowrun requires a variety of different skills, right? So we've got our, our street samurai, we have our, our rigor, 
Uh, let's open up the, yeah, good idea, Mitch. Open up the uh, character sheets. We'll be able right, to Right, so this is what we're trying to do. Yeah, that was our objective. There's Lady Z. And these are all Lady G's stats, and these are her, her attributes and uh, her skills. And You'll see that, yeah, she loves the combats. And then underneath skills would be special abilities, uh, I mean, excuse me, specializations, which then open up abilities. Right, now here's a rigger right here. You see he's got drone control and drone combat. And uh, this is our shaman uh, who focuses on uh, summoning and spell control, uh, spirit control, because that's what he brings into the world. Uh, and of course, uh, everybody's film favorite. <laughs> Mr. Jake Armitage. Yeah, star of screen, big and small. Uh, he's joining us uh, here on this adventure. Yeah, Jake is from the Super Nintendo game. Now he's uh, gonna be a playable NPC, but he also has an important part in the story. And he mixes uh, street samurai skills and, uh, uh, and magic. Uh, yeah. He's a mage. All right, now check this out. Uh, we don't know what's going on here, so I'm going to put away my gun. All right, we're going to walk in all cool-like and see if we can uh, bluff our way past any guards that might be here. Hello. So the guard's, uh, guards asking us for identity? Yeah, here, here's my papers. What a boom Sorry. Now, this is all part of what we call the perception system. Uh, NPCs uh, make uh, an initial judgment when they first encounter a character about whether the character is a friendly, neutral, or enemy. Uh, because uh, Lady Z put away her guns, he, he viewed her as a neutral and thus didn't use his overwatch to shoot her right when he came in, much to his mistake. Now, perception is actually based upon uh, the character, the character NPC stats, and then, you know, the uh, weapons, you've, whether you've got weapons exposed, and disguises. Yeah, now, if I had gone on this other part of the side mission, I might have found a disguise, and then using Lady Z's uh, corporate security etiquette, uh, we might have been able to get past him, but I didn't do that and decided to give him the edge of my blade. Uh, so we're just moving to advance here, and you'll notice like Lady Z just automatically took cover there next to cover. When you're in combat mode, that's the default behavior. Uh, you'll notice the move icon is telling you how much cover is available at the locations you're going and how many MP you're spending. All right, hold on here. Uh, Let's AP give a little rigor play. Ah, uh, okay. So the rigor is actually putting his consciousness through cyber technology right into that drone and seeing through the drone's eyes. And one of the things he's seeing is, ooh, there's a guy waiting to kill us. Right. So he moved the drone to a place where none of the other characters could go through a, a ventilation shaft into that access corridor. And so now we know what's waiting for us in the next room. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> so Mitch is going to position the team up here and go, uh, to go through the battle, uh, go through into the next room. Uh, the other half of, uh, of kind of the bluff game, we talked about kind of the first perception of how NPCs see you, uh, and that uses disguises and uses your weapons and everything else, your weapon uh, status. But once you get into conversations with them, that's where you use uh, charisma, your charisma and, and your etiquette uh, to try to bluff your way through. Did you hear that? Hmm, maybe some shadow runners are coming to off me. Why don't you shut up and shut up, Mike? I just did. Yeah. Uh, all right, so bring all right now check this one out. The troll can summon spirits. I'm going to go to my backpack. Now here, what's interesting is, see, I've, I can summon a fire elemental or I can summon an air elemental because I have these magical fetishes in my backpack. Right? Uh, and, and those, yeah, th th those are uh, our limited resources are used once. Uh, once he brings the, uh, the spirit into, uh, into existence through summoning it, he then gives it AP. But this is kind of a real serious risk-reward relationship here because yeah. you've got this escape percentage uh, because spirits don't like to be controlled. And if you push them for too much, they will break away. When like they... video game companies. <laughs> when they break away, they can be dangerous back to their masters or anybody else. So you're playing, you're always walking that edge. And the more you ask for, it grows over time. So they're harder to maintain over longer periods of time. Yeah, and really, you don't want one of these spirits to break free because they break free mad. Yeah. So he's using uh, the abilities of the spirit there to attack. He wiped out the one guard and brought another. Now Jake comes in. Here comes Jake. That felt good. So you notice that, that uh, in weapons fire, depending upon the weapon and uh, your ability with the weapon, you can you know get single fire up to full auto fire. Uh, uh, aiming's in there. All the stuff in the paper and pencil role-playing yeah. game. The, the, the game system really is a pretty faithful adaptation of the original pen and paper system, including kind of the way damage steps up. Right, so you right. Can do, Stages. Yeah, so that you've got kind of uh, from half of the normal damage all the way up to 2x the damage based upon uh, how it stages with your Yeah, you'll body. see it as you watch it. You'll see the word weak show up or crit, you know, all the way up to crit times two. 
them. Oh, this okay. is something I almost wish we didn't teach AI to <laughs> yeah, do. No kidding. Which is use hand grenades because it, <laughs> it can be devastating when you when you have your your team bunched. Yeah, they I just agree. see that and they go for the hand grenade right away. I think a little covers in order for your uh, player character, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. No problem. I'm here to help. All right. Um, nice troll shot there. So you saw the damage, the weak. So she had two shots. One was at full, full damage, one was at weak, which was half. All right. Weak. Now, let's see. Jake. What are we going to do with Jake here? Oh, Jake's a spellcaster. Yeah. Oh, wait. That Yeah, these guys uh, were ca throwing a grenade, which is area effect, right? How about an area effect spell? Yeah, a nice little fireball. I like that. Good. A little fire, Scarecrow. So, um, damage, uh, weapons can have uh, persistent damage. So, wait, for wait, instance, I gotta finish the, him. There we go. Uh, all right, nice job. And, yeah. you know, that, that kind of, it's very, that's very Jake, right? <laughs> <laughs> Throw a spell, then you, then use the gun. Uh, but, but spells uh, and damage can be persistent. So, like, that, that fire would have continued to do damage to him uh, for multiple turns. If I hadn't ended him. It was almost, it was almost nice. Of almost compassionate. Yeah, that's me. Uh, so what, what uh, Mitch just did there is he logged out of um, the, the drone to, to use a, a, a shot, you know, you fire at the, the guard, and then logs back in to control him and shoot the guard in the other room. Right, so when you throw your consciousness into the drone, you can't use any of your offensive capabilities. You can move around, but you can't shoot or interact with uh, objects, that kind of thing. Bring the shaman up for a closer shotgun fire. And then All right, let's invest some more. <laughs> Gotta watch it now. All right, so he's gonna control this. Go get that guy. Let's bring him up a little closer. And. That's a nice shot. Thank right. you. So. Uh, uh, you spend AP per turn. You notice, like on the top there, all the uh, all the portraits had gone gray. That means that you spent all the AP available for them this round, and then they're refreshed when we go to the next round. Oh, also, I'm just using the base spirit attack right now, but the spirits also have uh, special abilities. So I could have done some sort of lightning bolt or electrocution, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, they carry spells like the mages and the shaman. Right. Right, now you see, uh, there's a computer terminal. Well, uh, after, I guess actually, you can do that guy first. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to have a little fun here. <laughs> we'll do the role playing in a minute, but I just want to make this guy pay with his life. All, All right. right. I think that air spirit gets MVP for this room. Man. I mean, he's, he's <laughs> now, done, where were we? He's done awesome. I was going to pay point out that there, uh, the terminal lower right there. Oh wait, let me just banish uh, this banish guy real, fi right. real fast. There. Yeah. So yeah. you see this little white dot and circle um, pulsating around that terminal. That means it's an interactive object, uh, and you can uh, send a character over there to find out what's going on, interact with it, and, and pretty much you can make anything in the world an interact uh, interactive object, uh, as you'll see we do in a couple different cases here in the mm -hmm. game. All right, so let's find out what this facility is actually doing. All right, should we dig through the files, kids? Let's, yeah, let's dig through the files, huh? All right, what's going on here? Jordan, can you read that? So, well, so basically what we've got here is, uh, we're not going to go through them all, but this is the research logs of the guys who have been doing the research in here. It's clear that they've got some kind of, of uh, awakened creature that they're experimenting yeah, on. Yeah, like an awakened sentry, right? Yeah, something, yeah, something that they're, that's big and nasty, and they're trying to train to be bigger and nastier. It looks like they have five of them, and they have different uh, conditions. Do you um, Five. Oh, that's great. So yeah. do you think we'll meet the big and nasty well, thing? Well, gosh, probably. Uh, we're not going to read through all the rest of the files. But no, we want that fail safe, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that bottom one there is like, what happens if the beasties go bad? That's the one we want. Yes. It probably allows us to hurt the beasties. Yeah. So with that in hand, now we'll advance into the next room. Mm-hmm. All right, standard two-by-two two leapfrog formation. Go, go, go. Your training comes out. Yeah, my yeah, my training and watching Die Hard. Well, you can be trained by worse. Well, maybe <laughs> not actually. Yeah. All right, so he's bringing up kind of the two the two the two best fighters, right? Yeah. The, uh, right up front, and uh, and let's find out what's there. Uh oh. All right, what do we have here? We have a looks like we have a we have a corporate mage. Yeah. And uh, and a, and a security guy shouldn't be too tough. No, that should be fine. Oh, now. That corporate mage right there, I'd like to call your attention to that. That's one of our backers, but also our forum moderator. That's RC. And what better way to reward one of our backers than to... Uh, kill him with yes. all extreme prejudice. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and he was kind of snooty to us, so that right here in the yeah. scene. So He's he got to pay. He deserves that anyway. 
Uh, so we now we know it's a Renraku lab. We didn't know that before. And we know that, that he has a herd of basilisks, which are nasty. The big creatures, the big things, and they bite. <laughs> they got the, the gnarly, gnashy teeth. And they will do a paralyze with their with their sight. Um, which, uh, oh, petrifying game. Ah, yes, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Oh, I read all the books and stuff. Ah, good. All right. I wish I could. Um, Let's get right, Scooter. So I'm going to bring Scooter up behind Scooter us. And drone. Now, you notice when the drone, when he's not jacked into the drone, the drone automatically follows him. Yeah, what's interesting, though, is you can set him to not automatically follow you, and so you could, like, leave a line of sight on a room behind you so you don't get snuck up upon later on. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, um, now when, he, when he activated Jake here, you can see I don't, um, on the ground. The ley lines. You can see the ley lines, which, of right. course, he just moved Scooter on top of the most powerful ley line. Now, ley lines allow um, mages to throw spells much more effectively. Uh, so they're, they're, they they don't uh, have as much cooldown. Cooldown is like a dynamic of how often you can throw the spell, uh, and they do more uh, damage, and they're higher percentage to hit. So Unfortunately, more, Scooter's standing at it. Well, there's multiple ones. You can get you can still get to the small one. Yeah, you right. can move Scooter off later, too. Yeah. So they get a turn with him. All right, so uh, the mage Apparently, RC is pissed at us for some reason. I don't know. Oh, damn <laughs> grenades again. <laughs> Oh, should... all right. Oh, There's the first of the Say beasties. hello to my little friend. And, uh, what? Right. What? No, no, no. Don't, 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 don't. It should be okay. No, it's not okay. So, I am paralyzed on the ley line. Yeah, that would be a tactical <laughs> error right there because now you can't move them off of the most it's powerful. Should, it'll be fine. I feel really good about this. Uh, okay. Well, they take a lot of damage, so. Uh, you all right. Take now a check lot this out right there. We got the uh, shaman. Right. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, Tell so, them about so that. So basically what we have here is Shaman can bring spirits in the world in two different ways. We saw the way he brought the air spirit in uh, through using a magical fetish that he carried with him. Here he's found in the environment uh, something that he can call, he can summon a spirit from. In this case, it was like those old skulls. So he's brought in an abomination spirit. Right. The, the, you can summon in these like, heart spirits from extreme concentrations of emotion, like whatever an abomination didn't like. Something bad happened here very clearly. Yes, and probably still is. Uh, you can see the red hand over the top of... Uh, uh, of wait a minute, here it comes. It's good. Oh, wait, oh, wait, go and... Doosh! Yes! Nicely done. A basilisk. Why Nothing. did it have to be a basilisk? <laughs> yes, well, there you go. Some, we're all indie fans at the heart. <laughs> Cover your heart! So, another... We, we see that terminal flashing over there. Uh, so it's, it could be a, a, a place to use that override code. Because we don't, you see all the basilisks over in the upper right. We don't want the rest of them coming. No, I don't. I don't uh, like that. Oh, this guy's healing. Oh, thanks, RC. RC's on fire, but healing himself and healing himself some more. That's what I. I want to run up to you and heal myself. So okay, the basilisk is going for the abomination. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Stay away from now, me. Now actually, Thank you lost. You. you lost control of the abomination. When oh brought, yeah. When you brought it in, uh, it, it broke free, so it's now uh, a free range. Yeah, enemy. I gambled and lost. We can't get too close to that abomination, or he'll take off our head. So oh, you're gonna Let's do, okay. Stop so he, this. What do you think? Let's so he's see. opening up uh, the, the terminal, right? And the, and uh, talking about where you can use the overwrite. Do we uh, want overwrite? Yes, yes, I think yes. You do. <laughs> yes. Kill basilisk. Yes. No. Oh, there they go. All, all right. All dead. Good. Now run away from the basilisk and the uh, abomination. Oh my goodness. So, and now one of the things again, everything you're seeing was all built in the editor, right? Even even like the the way those basilisks died. All of that is all. All that logic, all the special effects, all the lighting effects, uh, all the way the AI works. You know what we need in here? <laughs> no, another fire spirit. elemental. Yeah, yeah. 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 Push, push your luck, dude. Go yeah, ahead. why not? And me, right between all of them, or the, the shaman. Sorry, I'm actually in this chair right now. Too, but I feel like I'm there. All right, so the fire spirit, we can do yeah. it. Ah, oh, yeah, good. All right, come to me. One. One. Do I get and three? Do I get three? Yeah. Taste that, RC. There you go. Start with fire, end with fire. <laughs> All right, what's next here? Uh, well, you do have a basilisk there in the room. Oh, he may be, be burning, fine. but he's still dangerous. <laughs> yeah. All right, what do we got here? All right, mana bolt. So far, Jake, throw a spell. Missed. Jake, not very impressive. No, no. All right, switch the other one. Right. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. There you go. When in doubt. <laughs> Always shoot. <laughs> Conserve ammo. And never cut a deal with a dragon. Yes! All right, that is Shadowrun Returns' first walkthrough of gameplay. Thank you for all your support. We would never have gotten here without your both financial and emotional support. We, uh, we have a lot left to do. Uh, we're going to finish up the game, the campaign. 
polish off the rough edges. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then get it out there for you guys, hopefully, to enjoy and to start making your own stories so that we can enjoy them as well. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and we'll talk to you again soon.